Hi, so this is uh, Marinia's and uh, Ruthu's final project for the scientific computing class. Um, for our final project, we decided to delve into the Xenity package that's provided um, through Active. And our motivation for this essentially stemmed from the lack of a GUI interface for Active and the fact that MATLAB has a really incredible interface. Um, but a little bit more about the Xenity package before we delve into anything else. Um, package is obviously just used to, is a bunch of uh, functions that can be used to create a graphical user interface. Um, these are some of the functions you can create a calendar, a text entry, a file selection box, a, you know, graphical um, user, your GUI just to display some data, and uh, progress bar, notification icons, just the usual stuff that you would expect out of um, a GUI package. Um, but given that, there's details about installing it that we need to go into first. Okay, uh, now that we introduced Genity, so before moving further, let's go into the installation part first. Uh, installation part was a little trickier than we thought it would be, but anyways, let's get started. Uh, first, uh, we had to download the Genity package from Octet Source 4, just download the package. And we even had to download the uh, Genity for Windows from the plusella.com. The more information is given in our links. All right, after the Genity package has been downloaded, uh, we have to install the Genity package first. Uh, just go into the octave command and type in package install genity.tar. And then uh, after installing package to use and load all the functions provided by the Genity, uh, just type in package load Genity. All right, finally, uh, modify the system path by adding an environment variable uh, named Genity underscore data dir and assign it a value corresponding to a shared folder within Genity. Uh, this is just an example, you can do it. And now we are ready to use the Genity package in Octa. So let's move into our application. Uh, that we have created using Genity package and Octave. Uh, to demonstrate the use of uh, Genity Octave package function, we developed an in. All right, first, uh, this is a Genity uh, entry dialog box. Type in your name. My name is not E2, it's RITU. Okay, and welcome, Ritu. All right, uh, to uh, we developed an interactive gaming environment that's called a mind gaze and uh, the user are also given the option to play the game, to plot the statistics, to view the calendar or to quit the process. Alright, let's get started by playing the game. Here we go. Okay, cool. Um, we ready for some fun. Yes, of course. And so the game is essentially that the user, uh, that is us, we think of a number between 1 and 1,000, we don't tell the computer, and the computer is going to guess it in a maximum of 10 moves, which it usually does it well below that anyway. Um, but, okay, so let's get started. Think of a number between 1 and 1,000 for the pur purpose of this demo. I'm going to go and let you guys in on my number, and um, I pick mm, 907. And... Okay, so I'm ready. And okay, so is my number 500? Um, no, it's you have the options of hitting correct or high or low. The number is obviously low. And is it 750? Nope, still less than 907. And 875 is getting closer, not really. 938, much, much higher than our number. Um, 907, oh, there you go. I got it. So this is that, that, that's that number, and so we hit incorrect, and great, it made the guess in five moves, just as I said, less than the 10. Um, do we want to play again? No. Um, thank you for joining. Come back again. Um, but let's go, let's go actually look at our game a little bit. Um, so the game, the algorithm is actually a very simple, just binary search algorithm. We're given an upper bound and a lower bound of 0 and 1,000. And each time you make a guess, we just kind of half the bounds. Um, but the point is that um, we use our Xenity functions. Here we're displaying the message where we're asking you, telling you the instructions. And here we're um, asking you to actually give us a prompt where you say you're ready or not. And um, I think when the computer also makes their guesses, 
the make guess function essentially does the same thing, uh, outputs a prompt box for you to um, enter whether the number is high, low, or right. And when it's right, it does a message, it does a prompt where it says, great, I've made the move, it's showing off a little bit. Um, but yeah, so it's essentially we're, we're using sanity functions all over here, and we the, fu the function finally returns um, the number of guesses, and the number of guesses the computer takes to guess your number, and we, we use that data to store um, statistical information, which we'll go into a little bit more. Alright, um, I wanted to tell a little bit more about the genity function that we have used. So, let's get started. This is a, a text in 3 dialog box, genity in 3 dialog, bo dialog box. And type in your name, this is a prompt box. And for this we have used a genity message dialog box. And uh, this is a genity underscore list box, which displays the graphical list. And we can even use it as a radio box or check box, but we have used it as a list box. So, and uh, I wanted to show about the plot statistics. Uh, at the end of the game, we record the statistics. So, using the data collected from end of the game, uh, user can view the uh, game history, selecting the option called plot statistics and this is a progress bar even though the progress bar is not progressing but still we include it here just to show the graphical progress bar provided by the genity package and this is a plot which is drawn for the number of players against the number of moves uh, this looks kind of dry plot but still we are showing just to demonstrate that we could plot using genity in octave all right and uh, let's cancel it And uh, now users are also given the option to view the calendar. And there we go. By selecting the calendar, uh, the default date is today's date, May 8th. And we can switch between dates uh, like these. And there we go. All right. Um, right. So that's kind of the basic functionality of the package. There's obviously more detail in our um, LaTeX file. but. I, uh, we wanted to go into a little bit more into the limitations of the package. Um, there's actually a couple that we things that we want to discuss. Um, right off the bat, you can notice that um, the, in the Octave Prawn, there's an error message that pops up when you return from the calendar. And the error message just pops up each time you click on a date. If you're moving in between months or years, it doesn't do anything. But if you double click on a date, it's going to give you an error message. And that's obviously not, uh, not a sign of a good thing. Um, but aside from that, there's other things like the progress bar that we showed already. You know, it doesn't really progress; not really doing much. Um, and that kind of that kind of either implementation documentation details don't exist for the package yet, and that's a little a little hard to um, handle. But the, one of the other things that we had we dealt with at least specifically for the game that we built um, was return values from Xenity functions. Um, Xenity returns user input as um, vectors, which given that we're dealing with strings, especially in our game, was a rather cumbersome thing. So we had to um, create a function, create a program that essentially took in the vector, the entity returned, and a string that we would pass into the function and make sure and to do a character by character comparison off the two to see if they were equal or not. And, you know, it would just say display true or false based on what it was. Um, so it's good to be able to find a solution for the problem, but it was definitely rather annoying to have to um, deal with strings in, in such a in such harsh way. But then again, Octave is a mathematical software, but we we have a solution, so you know all's good in the world. Um, but aside from that, I think Octave the Xenity package does have a lot of potential. It has has the ability to do a lot more. There's already a lot of cool functionality already there, but more definitely can be done and needs to be done um, for for it to be to for it to be used for anything reasonable in the future. But I guess overall, I hope you guys enjoyed our tutorial, and hopefully, you'll be able to use that in the future sometime. And please do look at our LaTeX file for more details there. 
we, we have examples for functions in the package and um, hopefully they'll help you get started off to be able to do some cool things. Thanks. Bye.